My name is Kevin Eisenfrads. I'm the co-founder and CEO of ContraLine. And we are in Charlottesville, Virginia, in our headquarters and sitting in our lab downstairs, uh, the Hare Lab, um, and named after my co-founder, John Hare. And so we are a medical device company developing a male contraceptive. Tell me about it. What are you working on? So we're working on the first long-lasting non-hormonal and reversible male contraceptive that uses a gel to occlude the vast deference. So the vas are a pair of tubes that transport sperm. You might be familiar with a vasectomy, which basically severs or ligates those tubes. Instead of doing that, we're simply inserting this gel inside and it blocks sperm from traveling through. So it's a non-hormonal long lasting option and that gel is also reversible. Um, so it provides men with um, basically greater control and just more options in general uh, over their reproduction. How, uh, how do you plan for reversibility? So um, that's a really great question. And it's something that men really care about. That's the number one thing that men have told us over and over. They don't want something that's permanent, like a vasectomy. They don't want something that's single use like a condom either. So reversibility, we're working on it a couple of different ways. And the first product that we're going to be bringing to market um, is a gel that lasts a couple of years. And it's also after, uh, it's very effective for that time span. Um, and afterwards it basically degrades or liquefies and reverses on its own. So the guy doesn't need to um, go get, in, get a reversal procedure and they could just decide if they wanna get another one, another implant or not. And so we aim to position this a little bit kind of like an IUD for men. <laughs> so, you know, you're developing this as a, as a company and so many male contraceptive products that we see are in the academic space or, you know, haven't quite made that jump. Uh, how do you see uh, startups, you know, what's your perspective in being a startup on male contraception and trying to make an impact in this field from this direction? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's been interesting. And to be honest, I think we're a little bit pioneering that direction because there aren't too many startups working on male contraception. But, you know, it's been interesting because we spun out of the University of Virginia uh, around a little over four years ago now. Um, we did not start out as an academic project. So there was no 10 or 15 years of basic science done first. And then we licensed that technology. We came in with an idea and then we basically got some proof of concept in an academic lab. But then we spun out almost immediately of starting the company and recruited some of the top scientists and team members from around the world to Charlottesville to work on this product. And so we're very product centric um, and that's allowed us to move really quickly. And so we've been able to fundraise um, uh, from venture capitalists, angel investors uh, for, for funding, um, for example. And that's allowed us to move really quickly, invest in our infrastructure in the lab we're sitting in here. Um, but it also allows us to tie incentives together. So a lot of times in academia, the incentive is to do discovery work, to publish your work, etc. We are interested in that and we, we are and will be publishing our work. But our number one focus is bringing a product to market and going as quickly as possible because there's so much demand here. Tell me how you came across ContraLine. You know, how did, what's the genesis of you being involved with this project and bringing this all the way to the point that it is now? Yeah, so I never had this uh, light bulb moment of like, what if we put a gel in the vast deference? Uh, this has been tried before for 30, 40 years now, right? There's been papers published in Indonesia and India and China and um, really, the genesis of ContraLine was when I started reading these papers as an under, I was an undergraduate student. I was a fourth year at UVA and I was working in a reproductive biology lab. So I've always had personal interest in reproductive biology and combining that with biomedical engineering. And basically, I was reading all these papers and I said, why hasn't this worked? Why haven't those teams of researchers brought a product to market? Um, in, in China, Indonesia, et cetera. And it's come down to what I believe is a material science problem. I don't think that we've had the right material that is truly safe in the vast, truly effective and reversible at the same time. So my co-founder and I, Dr. Herrick, kind of started from scratch. Rather than building on the work that's already been done, we said, okay, here's the problem. Now let's find the right material and chemistry that satisfies those design criteria and meets patients' uh, requirements. And so um, 
The idea really started just by looking at the field and identifying, hey, this concept is cool, and if it worked, it would be a game changer, but it hasn't been done well before. And so let's do it the right way. Right. And what's that process been like, trying to create a product from nothing? You know, solving it from the, the ground up to try and say that, you know, all right, we have a problem, now let's design something towards that. What's that process been like? Uh, really challenging, to be honest. So, you know, um, and I, I honestly don't think that any amazing game changing paradigm shifting products ever going to be easy to create from scratch, right? So the, the challenge is we're not in the cardiovascular space or the, the bone or spine space where there's so much research and data and other products that are out there. We're in a space that the vast deference, there's you know probably less than 100 papers published that we can use to des help design our product, right? So the challenge has been with trying to move really quickly is learning about the anatomy and physiology while designing a product for that anatomy and physiology. Um, you know, it's been a lot of iteration, just like any medical device should be. So we've come a long way since our first formulation in that lab at UVA. Um, and, you know, now we're, we're getting great results in preclinical studies. And so the next step for us is, is going towards the clinic.